So for today's episode of I Spoon Unplugged, I'm gonna make one of my favorite vegetables come fall and autumn, which is squash. They are just like the first thing that hit all of the farm stands and it gets me super excited because I love to roast squash. All you really need is a high heat oven, some olive oil, salt and pepper, and honestly, that would be enough. But what I'm gonna make for you today is roasted delicata and acorn squash, although if you can only find acorn or delicata, it would work with either. I just like the different variation of shapes. One will be cut in a wedge, one will be cut into rounds. I'm going to drive home this idea of sweetness by also adding dates. I am a lover of Mediterranean food and Middle Eastern food, and dates are one of those fruits that I really love to cook in savory dishes. So I'm going to add that together with the squash, and you're almost gonna get this like double duo of sweetness, which almost goes against the grain of how I usually cook, but to counterbalance that double sweetness, I'm gonna add briny elements with olives, I'm gonna add acidic elements with rinds of orange and lemon peel, and then I'm gonna add a spicy element with some serrano chili. I'm gonna take you through this process, high heat oven, 425, so it gets really caramelized, I'll teach you some techniques like not overcrowding your pan, how best to season and what to use for your seasoning. And I think I might serve it on a bed of either labna or Greek yogurt to kind of give it this like creamy added textural element. So I'm gonna stop babbling and get into the kitchen and let's go through this recipe together. Okay guys, I already went ahead and cut our delicata squash into discs. Now I'm going to take the acorn squash and I'm gonna kind of use the ridges that are naturally in the acorn squash as my guide. It's totally your call. You could roast these with the seeds kind of clinging to the squash. It kind of just adds for another textural element. But I wanna ensure that I don't overcrowd the pan, so I'd almost rather remove this excess I want this to be kind of a hearty recipe for at least four people. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this acorn squash, but I want to note that going to three squash will definitely force me to have to roast this on two separate sheet pans because I mean, anybody that does my recipes all the time is probably like, oh my gosh, she sounds like a broken record. But if there's anyone new out there, I'm sharing it with you. You never wanna overcrowd your pan because then your veggies or anything actually will steam against one another and it'll never allow for that beautiful golden caramelization. All right, let's deal with our shallots now. A smaller knife because it's sometimes easier to peel the shallot like so. So I'm gonna just kind of gauge when I make the recipe based on the amount of squash that I have, if it's going to be five or six. But as always, I just encourage you to adapt to the recipe to what you have on hand or what feels right for you, your palate, your family, your budget, all of that. So one thing that I didn't mention about this recipe is that I am going to separate how I roast this. If I put the dates in with the squash, they're going to end up getting too brown because things cook at different rates, right? So squash definitely takes longer than a date would to cook. So I'm going to start with putting our shallots and our squash in the oven. But what I might do with the shallots and the squash is one serrano chili. So I'm gonna slice those super fine. And as you know, you do not need to use this if you do not like serrano chili or if you do not like spice, you can eliminate it. All right guys, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna use two sheet pans separate those three squash slices evenly distributed, toss it together with my shallots, some of the serrano chilies, drizzle it with olive oil, salt, pepper, pop it in a 425 oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Just some quick thoughts about seasoning. 
You are always gonna to wanna to season as you go. That's how you build the most robust flavor. So I'm seasoning right now with kosher salt, which is what I season with earlier on. And then at the end, right before serving, I use a finishing salt, which is Malvin sea salt, and always fresh cracked pepper. I have three garlic cloves here and I'm just going to smash them and give them a really rough chop. We have our green castle ventral olives. Squashing them allows the pit to release itself. And I'm gonna kind of leave them just kind of broken into messy little bits. I'm going to peel some oranges. I also have a Meyer lemon. Any lemon will do. Actually, lime would be really lovely too. After 25 minutes, they were beginning to have some nice caramelization. I'm flipping them right now. Citrus. Dates. Garlic and olives. I'm definitely just giving this a rough toss, but I do want to be mindful of making sure that these guys like this one that got very caramelized that I flipped it over. So I lower it to 400 degrees. I'm going to keep an eye on them. I want all of those flavors to melt together. I want the garlic to get a little bit crispy. I want the dates to get nice and mushy. I'm going to guess and say about 10, maybe 15 minutes, but I think around 10. Okay, I will keep an eye. All right, guys, I'm gonna create a base layer with some labna. Now I'm just going to haphazardly place some of the squash, some rounds, as well as some of the wedges. So one thing to note is that our serranos got singed, super, super crispy. So I think that when I write out this recipe for all of you guys, I will actually have you add the serrano chili when you add the olives and the dates so that they don't get so singed. some zest of orange to drive home all that amazing orange notes that we already have. Chopped parsley and then some texture. Just a little bit of chopped roasted pistachio. As always, finish with flaky sea salt, fresh cracked pepper, 